I published an initial version of a theoretical model of how new religions succeed, I could find virtually nothing to cite. Wait, <laughs> For generations, religions have utterly dominated our global sphere, dating back to the Egyptian era or even further. In the 11th century, Europe and its surrounding areas were evidently influenced by the religions of Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodox Christianity, Sunni Islam, Shia Islam, and I don't know. In 2015, 2.3 billion were Christians, 1.8 were Muslims, 1.1 were Hindus, 500 million were Buddhists, and other religions, 6% of people were that. But what bothers me is, why are these religions still evident throughout all these years? Why aren't new religions like Copanism or the Church of All Worlds not completely taking the world by storm? What made these religions successful, and what made these religions not successful? In short, how would you make a successful religion? Well, that's just the question we're hopefully gonna answer today. But first, is it legal? Well, yeah, in, in Canada, we have the right to religious freedom. All right, let's get into it. If you're wondering why this music is like this, I had a choice because I could either do uh, this or this. So I chose something else partly because I was a uh, uh, democracy. So, if you want to make your religion successful, then you gotta offer something and be unique in some capacity. Because even if everyone is unique, your ideas are a completely different story. So as a result, we're gonna be needing to measure how unique a religion is. Specifically, using this scale right here. Ultimately, the placement of a religion will entirely depend on the area it's located in. So for instance, while in North America the majority of people may believe in Christianity, in Japan it's not so conventional, with more people being affiliated with Shinto. To some scale up, your religion cannot be too conventional or too foreign, for if it is too conventional, what's stopping people from already going to an already established organization, already having a number of followers, and already having numerous places of worship? If it's too foreign, people would just regard your religion as being quote-unquote too strange to join. Consequently, this ends up being a balancing act of sorts, also depending on the religion's beliefs. Christianity is a great example of this because during the first century and the existence of the Roman Empire, the religion was totally ridiculous. At the time, the idea of even renouncing a religion was absurd, and Christianity challenged the socially accepted values and concepts of society. For many Christians would be persecuted, and the religion would be said to support antisocial and criminal behaviors. Even the notion that God sent his only son to be crucified and resurrected him for salvation was utterly preposterous in their current civilization, simply because it did not make any logical sense to the people at the time, and therefore making it reside in the too foreign territory. However, Christianity did offer something that was never even thought of before, for Christianity offered a religion in which everyone could be treated equally and respectfully, regardless of their ethnic, sexual, or racial background. It introduced the concept of moral universalism, freeing people from their brutal society of social classes, hierarchies, and superior positions that dominated the Roman environment. In the Bible, it explicitly states that there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Women were especially regarded highly, for the other local religions at the time were male-oriented. In Luke 8, 1-3, it says, Soon afterwards he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod Stuart Cusa, and Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. Additionally, in Romans 16, 7, it states, Greet Adronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. In consequence, it offered something to those that were discriminated against by society and was unique in its own right, balancing itself nicely on the scale and inevitably leading to its success today.
But for more newer religions, let's look no further than the Satanic Temple and Konkokyo. From its name alone, the Satanic Temple lands itself very close to the two foreign end of the spectrum, since in its North American society, Satanism is often associated with Satanic rituals and sacrifices. Yet the Satanic Temple's beliefs aren't like that at all, as their seven tenets frame them to be like a humanistic organization, believing that everyone should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures, that everybody's body is their own and inspiring action and thought. This religion does not restrict any individual's freedoms except embraces them, fighting for religious pluralism so that religions can coexist together. Though this religion does not believe in any scriptures, they do not believe in the supernatural, appealing to those with the gradual rise of secularism. In turn, like Christianity, they somewhat balance themselves on the scale, somewhat achieving success because of their uniqueness and their offerings they bring to table for their followers, as well as some other factors that I'll get into later. For Konko Kyo, it's quite different, hailing all the way from Japan. Being a sect of Shinto and an independent religion, Konko Kyo can be seen as being highly conventional on the scale but it actually draws some close parallels to Christianity. They have their own creed, believe that everyone is unique and equal, that respect should be highly valued, that there is one God, and that we are all children of that God. Furthermore, they have their own type of confession called Tortsugi meditation, where an individual sits in front of a minister, says whatever is on their mind, and Tenchi Kane no Kami responds through the words of the minister. But making themselves different from Christianity, they additionally do not believe in heaven nor hell, lucky or unlucky days, or anything called a sacred or unsacred place. There are no food restrictions at all, and you can join another religion in conjunction with this one, accepting the truths of other religions and making it a henotheistic religion. Therefore, by originally being a sect of Shinto while making several alterations to offer unique concepts, they managed to make themselves successful in their society, currently having around 400,000 members. In short, to be successful, be unique, and offer something new and valued. Next off, number two, determine your leaders. Ever since Jesus gave Peter one of the twelve apostles the keys to the kingdom of God, Roman Catholicism has remained stable, employing priests, bishops, and popes to lead followers into the true Christian life. The priests control churches, the bishops control the cathedrals that observe the churches, and the pope controls the entire Roman Catholic Church. Unlike the Anglican faith, you must remain celibate, unmarried, and be a man. If there were no leaders to fundamentally guide people in their faith, its members would be perpetually stuck in a state of confusion, since differing viewpoints and insights put religions to a halt, struggling to proceed in their various practices. There must be a knowledgeable leader or a group of leaders to consolidate everyone's interests into one, as Roman Catholicism had recognized earlier on. According to Exodus 30.30, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them in order that they may serve me as priests. To properly select their bishops, Titus 1.7 explains that for a bishop, as God's steward, must be blameless. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or addicted to wine or violence or greedy for gain. And finally, to emphasize the importance of the clergy, Hebrews 13.17 exclaims that you must obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with sighing, for that would be harmful to you. Now, here's where uh, things get a little bit vague and iffy with the other religions, mainly because they are new and I can't read Japanese. With the Satanic Temple, they are currently setting up a way for people to get ordained, however the option is still not available. They do, however, have an eminent spokesperson and co-founder named Lucian Greaves, actively voicing the Satanic Temple's objectives and appearing in numerous talks and shows to guide the face followers properly. In Konko Kyo, there are actually four types of members. First, it's just the people that generally follow the religion. Moving up from that are the minister's assistants, followers that have completed a training course and help the minister of the church in order to become a minister. The minister operates much similarly to a Catholic priest, performing sermons and operating the various functions of the church. Yet to become one, you are not required to be celibate, and you do not necessarily have to be a male. Women can become ministers just as much as men. Likewise, the founder of the religion acts much like the Catholic Pope, 
being the spiritual leader of the faith as a whole. Although these three faiths may be different in their central ideologies, they all ensure that there is a certain level of authority to properly exhibit their beliefs as a people, making them successful in the present and the inevitable future. Last but not least, number three, spread your religion. Yes! Yes, this may seem very, very obvious, but the amount of times I've seen a new religion while researching and exclaims, Wow, this new religion exists, is too many times. If you want people to acknowledge your faith and become your followers, you need to tell them somehow, which should be very easy, especially with TV and the internet. In spite of this centuries ago, Christianity, or specifically Roman Catholicism, shockingly didn't have this advanced form of technology. However, they recognized that if they wanted more adherence to their faith, they needed the news of their religion to be passed on through the word of mouth. Most notably, St. Paul, writer of around 13 books in the New Testament of the Bible, traveled over 10,000 miles to proclaim the word of God. In his expedition moving over land and sea, he visited Syria, Greece, Israel, and then eventually Rome. This, along with numerous missionaries and preachers, was what got Christianity as an entire faith on its feet, despite its persecution. Furthermore, Roman Catholicism today still tries to spread and appeal to non-believers, as was Christianity's objective in the Bible. In Mark 16, 15, it declares that Jesus said to his disciples, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. In addition, Psalms 96.3 expresses that you must declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all of the peoples. And finally, in Matthew 24.14, it reads, And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Because of the faith's willingness to tell people about their gospels, much of the world knows who Jesus Christ is, what Christianity is about, and its basic fundamentals, becoming one of the most successful religions ever known to man. Newer faiths fortunately take this lesson to heart, if you don't count the thousands that have probably failed. Take the Satanic Temple, for instance, for its second tenet reads that the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. As a result, they have decided to take the initiative and enact several campaigns, especially the Protect Children Project, in which children that sign up are protected from psychological and physical abuse, in adherence to one of the Satanic Temple's seven tenets. After signing, the school board gets notified that the child is protected by their civil rights from the Satanic Temple itself. After School Satan is a program intended for 5-12 to 12 year olds that actively attempts to educate children in science and rational while also getting them involved in games, songs, and art projects being run by the local chapters of the community. Hail Satan, released in April 19, 2019, is a documentary designed to educate people about the origins of the organization and their various exploits across the United States of America. By striving to notify people about the true intentions of the Satanic Temple through its campaigns, it manages not to fall out of relevancy under the swarm of numerous other religions. In terms of Kan Ko Kyo, like Christianity, they have additionally made an effort to spread their name, as mentioned in their sacred scriptures. Heck if I can read Japanese, but luckily they have some quotes from the books themselves. In Godekai 2, it says, I am aspiring for a blessing which will completely embrace the world with this faith. In memoirs, it announces that there are many people like yourself who have a sincere faith in Kamis but still have many problems. Help these people by performing Turetsugi meditation. Even its symbol represents their goal to tell people about the Kanko religion, portraying a red flower. In the middle is a kanji character for Kan, for gold, and around it are petals, which symbolize the Founder's teachings spreading to all eight directions of the earth. Ergo, how may you make a successful religion? Well, certainly one of those answers has to be to spread your religion. So, in conclusion, what have you learned? To make a successful religion, you need to be unique and offer something valued. You need to set and solidify your leaders in your faith, and get your religion into people's head by spreading it throughout the earth. Honestly, with the exception of some frustrating moments, researching these faiths were uh, moderately interesting. 
one can only wonder what new religions may spark a light and be successful in the eventual coming years. Oh my god, that's bad.